Before I came to find the new presentation, I was a practitioner of astral and out-of-body projection, and on occasion I may inadvertently find myself doing just this, as when the conditions are just right, it's rather easy to do so. I will generally exit my physical vehicle and find myself in my house initially. Then I will go into the street and beyond a certain point, a kind of a boundary if you please, I will then find myself somewhere in the astral. Back then, I didn't really know where I was going, but with the knowledge of the presentation, I know it to be the astral. Usually, as I say, I reach my street, and I can expect to find a few variations to the physical level version, and a few people wandering about. Sometimes they can perceive me, and we can converse, sometimes not. Sometimes I bump into a universal guide here also. On this occasion, however, the street was very dark, and yes, the street can vary from day to night, but this darkness was very oppressive, very thick and encompassing. Indeed, it was rather hard to see anything. Sometimes it takes a while for the astral perception to kick in, and my surroundings are hard to discern, like a mist. But with patience, the astral unfolds before me. From here we can see how individuals unpracticed in astral projection and other life-level recognition can be on these levels and not be able to see a thing, as the guides will take us about the creational levels to afford recognitional practice. If we sing the new you and get on board with our awareness becoming, but here the darkness would remain. I could see no other individuals, just this foreboding, blanketing blackness. But there was something in the darkness, movement, a vague impression hard to determine precisely, but there seem to be shapes slightly differentiated from the blackness, and the impression of eyes, and further real self-warnings of malice. Naturally, I didn't want to converse with these creatures, maybe entities of a kind, right at home in this oppressive darkness. 
I would return to my physical vehicle. I simply imagine my physical body, and I always will return to it. When I am doing astral projection, projections of this nature, regardless of where in the astral I might be on such projection excursions. But with the added awareness I have, I could sense these creatures were following me through from the astral to the physical. For yes, we do open portals if we project in this fashion temporary or permanent, according to how persistently we indulge in such what would be for most flights of fancy. But I've experienced this before, an inadvertent projection, a portal created, and things following me through. And the new you song comes to the rescue. Singing this song seals the portals. I can impression their closure, and the individuals wishing to use this convenient doorway have it slammed in their faces, and they are denied. So, what I can say is this. The new you song once again is a handy tool for our connection to the ears and a demonstration of intent, giving the green light for the real guides to assist us in our ears' recognitional endeavours. It also is useful for dispelling unwanted individuals from our midst. Seems the unaware with ill intent cannot stand in the face of the true light vibrational frequency of the new you song. It is like the armour of the ears and it also seals these portals. Many a time have I made an accidental portal and felt something coming through, and the new you song seals it right up. It is the true reality plumbing that can seal any hole between creational life levels. If the portal is being utilised with intentions not of a beneficial nature, and this is the first time I had seen my starting area of the astral immersed in such gloom and having these dark entity creatures there, I may well find and encounter individuals of this nature as I go beyond this launching point, beyond the barrier the street represents, but never there, so very close in, in literal terms. The darkness, I would say, is again the reflection of the constricted consciousness of a creation and the agreements that are compounding and bringing about its demise. We have a black holes, we have a dark sky at night, where once it was far more star-littered and bright, and we have the planet Earth beyond the cyberspace veil seen by aliens beyond it, as it actually is, a dark ball of murky blackness. And now this blackness encroaches throughout the astral also, the next rung up. For yes, all of the creational life levels are as one, and all the body vehicles which correspond to the levels and are designed for the forging of cause and effect collective experience are as one. 
and as agreement is of a restricting nature, all aspects of the vehicles utilised for the agreeing to this constriction results in all of creation going down the plug hole. So just further confirmation of this creational demise and also the proximity of these entities suggests they are further encroaching on the physical level. On previous shows I have presented dreams where they are hijacking body vehicles on the astral and using technology as a conduit to this end. Seems some of them may well be able to make use of this creational collapse. Perhaps the physical level is aligning itself through the demise with the lower areas of the astral, where creatures of this nature dwell, and facilitating the ease by which they can access and draw nearer to the physical, for one can only find themselves positioned in the lower astral through the cause and effect consequences of the type of choices and decisions that produce life experience that aligns with the experience of such a forbidding and unsavoury creational spot. And with all the distortion, it's very possible the physical level is becoming just as unsavoury as this lower astral. In terms of vibrational density, the lower astral and the physical level are then quite possibly very close now in terms of places you'd least like to be but find yourselves in in accordance with imposing and restricting of others' life choices. Maybe the veil will thin between the physical and astral as the collapse of creation proceeds and these entities are waiting, and we have seen many films which can be construed as documentaries of how the end times portrayed in them coincide with the demons and monsters from hell roaming the earth. If we take hell to be the lower astral, the end times to be where we are now, the verge of creational collapse, and the lower astral dwelling entities more able to access the physical through technology, astral vehicle hijacking, and simply pushing through weakened veils, then these movies are right on the money. A warning again of how astral projection is not without risk, for these critters are there and waiting and can seize unwary adventurers and prevent their return to the physical by severing the cord, etc. And these portals are very real. Without awareness, an individual would not be able to perceive them, oblivious of their presence. I've never heard an astral projecting practitioner ever speak of portals, and I never was aware of them before I began my awareness process, and my astral projection teacher never spoke of them. Again, he must have lacked awareness to see them, and even if aware of them, how would an individual know how to see all these portals without the connection to the real self? The real self knows just what to do, and how the new you song can be utilised 
to see all such portals. And that's the end of that one. Terrific, Kevin and everyone. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, very important, very real for everybody. So yes. Uh, if you kids write that down and send that along, that would be great. Uh, I'm assuming you read that, but uh, that's your next great book. Kevin, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, um, the viewer had, um, like I, what I mentioned about the experience earlier, the viewer had, they, they know it's Dwayne and the boys. Uh, I, I it was like I seen a council of them, and um, it was basically it was the, it was like like a, a council, a big room full of them, like it was having some big summit or council, and um, they're in a panic, they're in like a state of panic. That's the impression I got. It was it was panic stations because of what what was happening, what Dwayne was doing, or, or, or what Dwayne was doing. That's the impression. I, I didn't say it before. I just thought I needed to mention that as well. They was in a state of panic. Because obviously they didn't, didn't know, but like they're also they're in a state of panic. They, I don't know. That's the impression I got. I was left with with the last few. Thank you. Yeah, let me say thank you, Pierce. Yes, it's uh, very real again. Uh, it's so subtle uh, what's happening on the real side that affects the physical here, and this is why you're seeing all this mass destruction around the world and everything, and they don't care because they're just they're just destroying things as fast as they can and getting the agreement. And a lot of people are just so afraid to step up. They got to step up. They got to see through it. It's like the firemen in California. They know exactly what's going on with the laser planes, but they're just too afraid to say anything. So the world becomes destroyed. And just like Kevin is saying right there. Uh, yeah, they, they, uh, those, the powers that be, the cabal, whatever, the reptilians, uh, they're figuring if they can't have it, no one can have it. So they're more than willing to robotize everything to get rid of everything because they'll just bring people back unconsciously, keep them distracted. This is very, very real. Again, there's no la la land here. It's all about appearances. And you look at the difference from the indigenous people uh, originally focusing on the all natural environment and look at the focus today. It's all on distraction, all on distortion, all on appearances that seem to be something, but it just leads to, uh, to demise. So again, each person makes their choice. They want to wake up or not or be caught up with it. But this is what we're doing. Yes, they are really bothered by us because we're going to push them back and back and back. And they can go live in the darkness, but the light is going to get greater here as we create a real universal position here. And there's more so to this. Anyhow, thank you so much, Pierce. And uh, go ahead, Kelsey. Okay, and there's a couple documentaries you might want to check out or share with people. One of them is called Extraordinary, The Seed, The Seeding. Extraordinary, The Seeding. It talks about the hybrid program. And the other one is Franken Skies. It's a documentary. We're actually seeing if we can interview the young man that did the documentary, Franken Skies. Uh, it's Franken Skies, The Lies and the Skies Exposed about geoengineering and chemtrails. And also, we are selling the New Wave Water, like was mentioned earlier in the call, and that's on newwavewater.club. If you're interested in telling people about the water or selling it yourself, we're actually creating 25% off codes. So the idea would be that you would get a 25% off code with your name, and you would be able to give that to anyone you know, and you would receive the 25% that they're getting off. So if you're interested in learning more about the John Ellis Water or letting other people know about it, then let me know, and I can create a code for you. The other thing that we're going to be doing is creating a crowdfunding campaign for the total universal rainforest so we'll either do that on indiegogo or another website we're looking to see which one is the best to do that on so we'll be asking businesses to donate to that we'll be looking somewhere for half a million five hundred thousand as the campaign goal and everyone here once we have that up you're welcome to go to businesses or talk to people you know and share it around because it'll be a worldwide campaign so anyone can donate to it or talk to people about it or share it around 
we'll let you know when that's up and running. Yes, thank you everybody for sharing. It's terrific. Uh, a lot more is happening now as people step up. Uh, doesn't take many of us, but uh, yes, uh, have the adventure of your life going out there and creatively seeing how you can attract people and letting them know what's going on. I've uh, seen it on the real side myself as this uh, new position comes in. There's going to be a lot of panic and misunderstanding because of all the distortion. So that's why we're here. A uh, real challenge. And everybody's doing great. Thank you, kids, uh, for having this. Uh, Kelsey and everybody, yes, takes all of us. Thank you so much. See you next time. See you next time and catch the recording of this call on new Kevin Smith's YouTube channel. New Kevin Smith for the Skype calls and the Zoom calls. Share with your friends. See you.